Let's see. I got one more story. This is from the Daily Wire. Airport workers, backed by one of the biggest labor unions in the nation, protested at LAX airport this week for stricter airline emission regulations to combat environmental racism. The protesters are members of the Service Employees International Union, United Service Workers West organization, and the airport's Workers United. The protest occurred in front of a departure terminal at the airport. Protesters used the phrase, no justice, no peace, uh, and no clean air, no peace. I think we have footage of this inspiring protest. Let's watch it. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was the protest outside the airport. And, and by the way, I was just looking. Uh, so they're, they're protesting environmental racism. And uh, the article says, what is that? Environmental racism is a disproportionate impact of environmental hazards of people of color. Uh, communities of color are more likely to live in polluted neighborhoods. And as a result, we suffer the highest rates of asthma, cancer, and heart disease. So that's what environmental racism is. So first of all, just to say that there is no surer way to persuade people to hate you and your cause than to stage a protest at an airport, LAX of all airports. I mean, LAX is already the worst airport in the history of aviation. The is the I mean, honestly, the only good thing about uh, LAX, and I think about this every time I'm on my way to LAX. Only good thing is one bright side, which is that if your plane crashes on the way to that airport then it, it does give you like a silver lining to think about as you plunge to your death. You could just think to yourself, well, at least I don't have to deal with LAX now. So that's the only good thing about it. L- LAX is so bad that the last time I was there, uh, our, our plane had, had landed and pulled up to the gate and it still took us an hour, okay, an hour to get off the plane. Even from the time we pulled into the gate, it took us an hour to get off the plane because they couldn't find any gate agents to come and operate the jet bridge thing and open the door. They couldn't find anyone to open the door. So we waited an hour for someone to open the door. And the, you know, the flight attendants are like calling in and saying, can someone come and open the door? And people, it's like, so workers are on their lunch break and yeah, you guys can wait. Uh, it, it, LAX is an airport. It's, it's run and staffed by people who've, who've never been inside an airport before. That's what it feels like. Like all their employees at LAX airport emerge from some sort of time portal from the year 1760. They just walk around looking baffled, utterly perplexed. If you need, if you need them for anything, if you had to ask them to do anything, they just, they're completely confused. Now, I mean, it's really every airport in the country, but especially LAX. So now imagine that things are even more congested and even slower than usual because there are environmentalist hippies staging a protest out front. My God. And now imagine that you're, you're sitting in traffic on your way to the airport and traffic is heavy because there are environmentalists blocking the road for a protest. And then once you get there, there are even more environmentalists at the airport, uh, clogging things up. These people are, I, I mean, we, I've never seen a, a, a political movement quite like this where the, the people involved in the movement are utterly determined to make us hate them and, and mission accomplished, by the way. But at least we now know what environmental racism is. Environmental racism apparently is not, as I had assumed, you know, maybe as you assumed from the from that term, you think environmental racism, that must be when when the environment itself is racist, like the climate has been radicalized by Fox News or something. That's not what it is. Environmental racism is the claim that racial minorities are somehow more impacted by the environment than the rest of us. I mean, the environment is the thing that we all live in. So, you know, you think if there, if there was anything like the left, they always like to take their special victim groups and say, this really impacts these people the most. You think if there was one thing they couldn't do that with, it's the climate and the environment. 
because we all live on earth and we are all subject to it, really to the same degree. Uh, but even this, they do that with because they say that uh, minorities are more likely to live in urban areas and and uh, and it's polluted and all the rest of it, which, which, you know, that part is true. But, you know, here's the great thing. If you live in, in a, you know, urban area and there's a lot of pollution and it's gross and there's litter and there's, it's just disgusting and, and you're just surrounded by, by, I mean, ironically, you're not really surrounded by the natural environment at all. You're surrounded by concrete and glass and plastic and, and everything and you're getting asthma, uh, and, and, and all the rest of it. If you find yourself in that situation, and you don't want to be in that situation, which I understand. I wouldn't want to live that, that way either. Then here's what you can do. You can move. Just move to a different place. Don't, don't live there anymore. Just a, a radical idea. Just a suggestion I wanted to throw out there. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.